job on competition law. Now, yesterday marked the beginning of this event, and we had an enthralling session by Mr. Bharat Burolia, partner, competition and antitrust laws, AZB and Partners Mumbai. He addressed the topic merger control regime under competition act, which was graced with the positive feedbacks from the audience. On behalf of the ICFI Law School, I offer my regards to today's speaker, Mr. Jayant Bhatt. Thank you, sir, for ac accepting our invitation. The topic of discussion for today's session is current issues in competition law jurisprudence in India and the career prospects. It will include more issues to address the full aspects of the topic. I believe that by participating in this webinar, we are in the right place and at the right time. Together, let's accelerate the exchange of ideas and the scaling up of good practices. My heartfelt gratitude to all present here for taking a keen part in this vital program. I wish you all a very successful webinar. Now, I would like to call upon Mr. Surya Saxena, who would be introducing our today's eminent speaker. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Amin, sir. I hope I'm audible. Yes. Uh, very good evening to one and all present here, uh, respected registrar, sir, assistant dean, ma'am, uh, Mr. Jayan Bhatt, our esteemed guest for today, and all our participants. I would like to take this opportunity of uh, giving a brief introduction uh, of Mr. Bhayan, uh, Mr. Jayan Bhatt. So, Mr. Jayan Bhatt is based out of New Delhi, India. Sir holds dual masters of law, LLM from the New York University, USA, and the National University of Singapore. Sir is also a member of the prestigious Supreme Court Bar Association and Delhi High Court Bar Association. Sir's office caters to varied clients comprising of governmental and non-governmental bodies, multinationals, financial institutions, and individuals in an array of matters. Mr. Bhatt, besides being a practicing advocate, is also a prolific speaker at various platforms and is an individual with firm belief in greater societal good. He has a keen interest in teaching and mentoring young minds and is an advisory board member to various organizations. Sir regularly features in news articles and columns and is also a writer and a thought leader. With this brief introduction, I extend a warm welcome to you, sir, on behalf of the IFA University Dehradun. I hope this will be a great learning experience for all of us. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Suri Saxena ji and Aman Gautam ji for such a warm welcome and uh, to ICFI Law School. First of all, my apologies because I'm running 10 minutes late. I was on call with Suri ji telling that it might be clashing with the matter in High Court uh, because sometimes, you know, we are also bound. And I was just telling my, my associates that, you know, sometimes it's called a problem of plenty, definitely not an anti-competitive as the uh, you know, the theory of the day is for this webinar. Uh, but then we are all, you know, struggling with our uh, little bits and bobs of, you know, cases and the client's uh, trust that we have to cater to. In fact, uh, just before, you know, I was on call with you, Suraji, I, I got a message from uh, one of my connects in Reuters. And Reuters has broken the news that CCI, in fact, is being now sued by Google. And this news broke just half an hour ago uh, that uh, for breach or for leak of some sensitive information, uh, so far as I think abuse of dominant position is concerned, uh, uh, you know, for which CCI was already probing the Android phones and uh, the role of Google, uh, you know, and other, uh, you know, payment uh, system in that. So I think Times of India had covered this few days ago and now Reuters has also covered it. So, you know, it's just, just uh, you know, half an hour ago. So I just thought, you know, what a coincidence I'm going to speak on bits and bobs of competition. And here we are when Reuters is going against our apex authority in the country, uh, which is a regulator and, you know, the administrator of uh, the competition law. Uh, but uh, uh, as is my understanding, I'm not going to bore you, uh, you know, because I'm sure in yesterday's session you must have been given the briefings and the guidelines of competition law, uh, uh, you know, why it was introduced. Uh, let me let me give you a brief outline before we can start the question and answer session. And unless you have uh, asked your students not to open their videos, I always you know, ask my audience, please have your videos on, feel free to interject, pause me at any point in time, the session is meant for you. Uh, and whatever I know of competition law, I know a very, very limited thing. Because it's still uh, you know emerging field in our country uh, the law was introduced back in 2002 before that we had something called the mrtp act uh, and post uh, you know the globalization of a market in 90s uh, you know the uh, there were various commissions which sat and then you know uh, uh, thereafter the law was laid down in 2002 and this is the same year when i went to law school uh, you know when competition uh, act and competition law was begin 
beginning to emerge in India. Over the years, and I think almost two decades of uh, you know competition law, we have, we have seen a lot of things. We have seen a lot of uh, disputes, but I think the three main criteria which cover uh, uh, the ambit of constitution law one is uh, dominant position and the abuse thereof. Uh, it has to be seen whether you know the cartels or uh, these big uh, conglomerates are in a position uh, that can be abusive, uh, you know, in a dominant sphere. I think the other uh, part of uh, uh, is cartelization. Uh, together, you know, coming of all these uh, uh, big companies uh, to to see whether cartelization is happening or not happening, uh, that is, uh, uh, I think, something which has to be seen. Amongst the other emerging trends, uh, the empty competitive agreement is something which is very rigorously uh, taken by the watchdog, which we call the Competition Commission of India or the CCI, uh, which is defined in Section Three of this 2002 Act. And then, as I just discussed, abuse of dominance position is discussed in Section 4. Uh, you will find cartelization, I think, in Section 3 and 2. And then the other important factor is the uh, combination control. So whenever two uh, big companies uh, or big entities are going for a merger and they have a huge turnover of, let's say, 1,500 to 4,000 or 4,500 crore or something, then they have to require a mandatory approval or a prior approval of the Competition Commission of India. And amongst all these things, uh, the Competition Commission uh, has to ensure and has to determine that uh, the guidelines as per the Act are not flouted. Uh, the, uh, the interest of both, I think, the competitors and the consumer also has to be uh, kept in mind. And there have been very interesting judgments over these years, uh, which have fallen in the ambit of both, you know, uh, the uh, the ambit of uh, abuse of dominant position and also of, uh, uh, you know, cartelization. And we have taken and drawn inspiration from other jurisdictions also. I think UK, US, Europe have a very strong uh, competition watchdog and antitrust, uh, you know, organizations as we, as we uh, popularly call them. I think the stem of our, the whole uh, uh, system of competition law, I think, emanates from our Article 38 and 39 of the Constitution, which says that, you know, the state has to ensure that you have to have uh, the economic, social and other, uh, you know, fallbacks and option uh, for the people of the country. So we draw inspiration from the Constitution and throughout, uh, 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 you know, as a, as an adjudicatory body, CCI has done, I think, some wonderful work over the years. But as I said, just half an hour ago, when uh, I was about to join in for the webinar, I got to know that CCI itself is being sued. So I think that is something which is going to be interesting. I don't know whether Google or their lawyers are actually going to take them to court. If they take them to court, there will be something, uh, you know, will be, which will be completely, uh, you know, new or uh, refreshing for all of us to see and realize how, how far these things can go. Uh, but, uh, you know, we keep hearing all these uh, cases, some of the landmark cases, I'm sure the students would have also heard of, you know, regarding cartelization and abuse of dominant position is uh, when, when a few cement companies came and had, uh, you know, uh, put a complaint. It's a very vast topic. Uh, uh, you know, there are, there are multiple things that you have to understand as to what uh, in, incorporates antitrust, uh, what uh, in, incorporates, uh, you know, anti-competitive uh, activities, what is cartelization, is it only the small companies, is it the big companies, how do you gauge uh, you know that these complaints are being made how does CCI look into it uh, and just to give you a brief uh, summary if, if you have to file a complaint you can file a complaint directly to CCI they can take a swim out of cognizance or the state government or other bodies can also go to you know the CCI uh, director general and they can lodge a complaint and then CCI is the first step in terms of hearing any um, uh, anti-competitive matter in the country and the appeal has to go to a appellate tribunal which is called the compact I think the limitation the time limitation for which an appeal has to be preferred is about 60 days from compact. If you're still not happy if one of the parties has lost the case, they can definitely go to the Supreme Court of India. And I think, again, the limitation is uh, 60 days. So just briefly encapsulating the essence of, uh, you know, the competition law in the country, uh, this is what it is. But uh, uh, in, a, in a lighter way, let me let me discuss two, three, uh, you know, cases which uh, I think the young students may have heard of, I don't know. Uh, but uh, we all watch movies. And I think in 2012, uh, Ajay Devgan Films had filed a case against, against Yashraj Films. And I think two movies in India were uh, going to get released uh, back in that time. I think one was the, this uh, Sardar, Son of Sardar, I think by Ajay Devgan, and the other was Jabta Gajan uh, by Ashraj Film. So uh, in India, we have two types of concept basically for movie goers. One, we all know in Metropolitan, we have multiplexes where there are different uh, you know cinema screens. And then in the smaller towns, smaller cities, we, we have the single screens where you have the front stall, the upper stall, the balcony, the traditional mode of you know cinema viewing. And I think uh, it was supposed to be a Diwali release and all the big, uh, uh, you know, banners prefer either, you know, a, a, a 15 August or a 26 January or a Eid or a Diwali release because the footfall is more in terms of, you know, crowd and all. And uh, in that, I think Yashraj uh, Productions had already gone to uh, these small cinema owners and have said, 
and I think there was another Salman Khan movie I think which was also releasing on, on 15th of August or 8th and then say, they, I think the deal was that we will let you release this uh, uh, you know Jab Tak Hai Jaan only and, and the Salman Khan movie together only if you uh, place both our pictures on this festive season and I think then there was a clash of this Ajay Devgan movie and he filed a case I think with the competition commission and said look this is anti-competitive this is abuse of dominant position and that was uh, you know the criteria which was laid down by him and when the courts uh, said to decide this, I think they said, though it is not abuse of dominant position, because in abuse of dominant position, there are two things that you have to see. One is a vertical dominance, one is a horizontal dominance. In horizontal dominance, if let's say the player are of equal might and rigor, let's say if Audi is fighting against Mercedes, that is horizontal. But in a vertical position, let's say if I am Tata Motors or if I am manufacturing a, uh, or if I am a manufacturer of a car, I, I may have suppliers, I may have distributors, then I may have people who are selling my cars in their showrooms, retailers, etc. You know. So in that it becomes very difficult. Similarly, for a for a film production house like Ashraj, their argument was very novel. They had told the court that look, we are not abusing the dominant position one because in India it's not just the Bollywood or the Hindi uh, film industry which is the only filmmaking industry. There is Tollywood, there is Bollywood, there is Maratha, there are regional languages, and then we are part of the Bollywood. In India at that point in time, I think around 700 movies were being released in a year. Now obviously with OTTs and other things, uh, you know things have gone up. And they said in so many movies, Yashraj Banner only you know makes five to seven movies a year. So how can we be a dominant player? And that was their argument. And uh, you know, and then they put the onus on the other party on the Ajay Devgan movie that you please show how we are you know abusing our dominant position. At best, it's a business uh, decision. So you know things keep uh, uh, going back and forth. And as it is, it's a very tricky pro uh, proposition even for people who are practicing in the competition line how to decide what is right and what is wrong. Most of us here, I'll give you another example. Uh, watch cricket, you know. And in cricket, when we watch, uh, we are all addicted to IPL, I'm sure, you know, but young, young people watch a lot of IPL, it's a T20 popular format. At the time of IPL, there was also a format which was parallelly launched called the ICL, the Indian Cricket League, I think. And uh, their uh, contention against the IPL was that IPL and uh, BCCI were hands in glove uh, to form cartelization and because of that, it will be injuring the sports and, you know, other uh, form of sports within the cricket uh, uh, regime cannot be uh, cannot survive. Though they won the claim, I think CCI back then had awarded about 50 crore penalty uh, to bar, uh, to uh, the BCCI, uh, against BCCI, sorry. You must realize that BCCI is a body for, for which I think 50 crore is pittance. You know, it's it's, it's uh, petty cash for them. So despite winning the case, ICL eventually lost and nobody has heard of ICL today. So the role of a reg regulator like the Competition Commission becomes very important because they have to look at the intricacies of things Sometimes winning a case may also be as good as losing a case because you may have got 50 crore but today we see the bidding of even one player is going into I don't know how many crore of rupees. I have not seen the latest bidding but sometimes when I open the newspaper I see even a 12 crore bid or a 20 crore bid for a single player is made and imagine a 50 crore compensation I don't think it's it's it's, it's fair in terms of uh, morality if not in terms of legality. Another incident uh, I must you know uh, illustrate before our young viewers here is we all eat Britannia biscuits, you know, and Britannia is uh, one of the leading brands in the country in terms of these FMCG goods, the fast-moving consumer goods, that is, uh, the full form. And in the FMCG category, I think when Sunfeast was uh, launching its product in India, so they had all these cream biscuits. And um, uh, Britannia used to sell, I think, a regular Parley G or some other biscuit for like 12 rupees or 10 rupees a packet. Cream biscuits were, I think, 20, 21 rupees a packet. And I think Sunfeast then branded their own biscuit at 5 rupees, the cream biscuits. Now, I am not commenting on the quality or the production uh, of, of the end product, but uh, when you say that uh, you are you, uh, abusing a dominant position, it can be both by increasing a price and decreasing a price because you have to uh, evade the market on the other side. So there are the you know the, these uh, different categories that uh, you know uh, lawyers and judges and adjudicators have to think uh, whether there is actually a abuse of dominant position. Then the, I think the next popular example I must give you before we start with the Q&A is the Geo. Most of us are using Geo because when Geo came, a lot of people say, is it not cartelization, sorry, is it not abuse of dominant position or trying to, you know, uh, evade the market. But there, I think there are six different parameters uh, that the Act has to see. And one of the, uh, the, the two uh, broad definition of those parameters is one, are the competitors amongst themselves are hell-bent to destroy each other? And second, are the consumers being affected negatively? So those things I think uh, also have to be seen, uh, you know, in terms of the competition domain. And in Geo, uh, the argument by Reliance was, look, we are not making any bigger company out of business. They are already in business. Be it Airtel, be it MTNL, be it Vodafone, uh, you know, be it, be it uh, uh, other 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 telephone companies. And their argument, I think, went well with the board. But you know, so, so have been, uh, you know, the cases uh, throughout uh, uh, the the brief history of uh, Competition Commission of India that they have been. 
uh, in existence since uh, 2002. And all these examples, I think, uh, are always good to put things in perspective. And I think I should now hand over the, you know, uh, the dice back to the host. So please ask, feel free to ask me any, any questions, which I think may be worthwhile for our young audiences, how they can, you know, um, benefit from this webinar and whatever extra examples I may have, uh, you know, with me, I can come up with them during the course of, uh, you know, the remaining of the webinar. We can take the question by end of the session, sir. Sure, sure. I think there were a few questions that uh, Suraji had, uh, you know, exchanged. Uh, I can I can take them also so that you know it can be a good interactive session if you want to take it now. Otherwise, we can uh, take it later also. Sir, thank you for the enriching lecture and the first question, uh, which is from the participant side, is that uh, very uh, basic in nature and and but but very important that. When young lawyers or the particularly first generation lawyers who are coming to the field of practice of competition law, what could be the basic suggestion to them and how they must be particular about seeking the opportunities, particularly in competition law? Right, sir. I think, I think a very, very important question, uh, especially for the young audience. And uh, let me let me jump right into, uh, you know, the jump right into action. Uh, I think there are a lot of good internship opportunities available to young uh, lawyers, young students, especially with the Competition Commission of India. I've had the privilege of interviewing uh, uh, the you know the former director, currently the legal advisor, Mr. Shuke, Sukesh Mishra ji, uh, 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 from the Competition Commission of India. Uh, in fact, the young viewers can also, I can tell them that uh, there's a small YouTube channel I run called Su You Zoom. Uh, you can subscribe to it and you can find the interview there, uh, which is about his life journey and how he has risen among the ranks and his role in the Competition Commissioner of India, and he has also narrated how the internship opportunities are open uh, for students across the country. So you can definitely go to the website of Competition Commissioner of India. They have always have a column for internships, for jobs. I think there are both contractual jobs available to people who have just freshly graduated. So if from Ikfai Dharadun, let's say people who are in their final years, I would encourage them to start applying for competition jobs or Competition Commissioner of India jobs if there is any opening. If there are young students who are in their first to fourth year, Please do your internship, but don't do it in first and second year. That would be my advice. The simple reason being, I think the course structure by the Bar Council of India is such that I think in the first two years, you are taught the basic humanity subjects. If you are pursuing a BLLB degree or if you are, uh, let's say, doing a BSc or a BBLLB, then I think the basic subjects are taught along with, I think, the legal history and contracts, torts, etc. It's only, I think, from the third year that main courses are, you know, taught to you. But in today's day and age, I think we have seen two years of pandemic. I would say a lot of information, a lot of good data is available online. You please brush up your knowledge by reading about competition law. Uh, the judgments that I've just discussed, there are more judgments than, than these judgments, but these, these were the interesting ones that I thought I must discuss, uh, you know, uh, as my opening remark. Read about these judgments, see the reasoning of these judgments, uh, try to also read about MRTP Act, which used to prevail before the Competition Act, and see the fundamental differences as to why the country moved from one act to the other. It's always important to know, uh, you know, a historical background on how a law has developed, uh, what was going in the mind of the framers of the statute. I think that is very important. So I think for any, uh, uh, you know, young viewers here, uh, you, you can always log into uh, the Competition Commission website. Some details, I think Mr. Sukesh Mishraji had also uh, said in, in, in my podcast, I remember the video podcast. You can tune into that and you can uh, get some valuable insights from his journey. And, you know, you must never give up, uh, you know, on your aim, aims and ambition. Other practical thing I must tell you is that because competition law is such a lucrative field, uh, you know, and really big high stake matters are, are dealt by Competition Commission of India. So at the start of a career, as a start of, uh, as a young lawyer, even with 10, 15 years of practice, you may not uh, be given a competition matter directly to deal with because, and I'm sorry to say this on a public platform, but even within our fraternity, there are very limited law firms, you know, who have already formed cartel to do competition law. And I'm not going to name them here. But they're already doing, uh, you know, good business uh, in terms of doing uh, uh, work for competition law for their clients, representing them and this and that. So maybe that will break in future. Maybe more lawyers are going to get fair opportunities. I hope, uh, you know, that, that the courts and lawyers can come together and say, look, this opportunity be also given to us. But having said that, at the end of the day, be it firms at the end of the day, you know, they have to come to independent lawyers to argue the matters. And, you know, most of the senior counsels are independent lawyers. 
and uh, you know they also argue these matters before the court and they have to you know put the case before the court uh, uh, another interview i would encourage you to watch on our channel of see you soon uh, is is one of uh, my friend who uh, who studied with me in my master's course of nyu nes uh, miss miss katri pass she is both a lecturer a part time lecturer in a university in estonia in europe and she is also a competition lawyer so i have also uh, you know her video session is also available so the young viewers i would encourage you to also see her interview and gain insight as to how the competition law works in europe so you will get a good comparative analysis of uh, you, know, you know the competition law in india competition law in europe and then uh, uh, you know if there are any online lectures available on youtube you can google them uh, you can find them yourselves and and keep updating your knowledge i think i think that is very important as a young lawyer Uh, but but do other things also you know when you are doing internships i am speaking generally here i am deviating a little bit from the topic but if you are doing internships uh, competition law you you do in your third and fourth year because by that time you might have done ngo or maybe a district court internship or may, maybe a law firm internship so that would give you a better overview also try doing internship in uh, trade laws if i think uh, uh, that would also be i think be good because somewhere the trade laws are interlinked with competition law so i'll just give you a basic example for example uh, you know india may have this very strict competition law that look we are we don't want the abuse of dominant position or cartelization but it is not applied on exports so to our exporters we say please go and dump your products or export your products to other countries but then there are anti dumping laws which are governed by the wto or the world trade organization and these anti dumping laws uh, we we are also signatory so if other country like china is dumping its product or any other country is dumping uh, its product on us we are also very cautious because india we also want to you know uh, protect our uh, unions we also want to protect uh, our industry and the you know the small time uh, uh, you know uh, industries which are just trying to crop up and you would realize i'll give you a uh, example with, with which you can relate to we all drive cars right i mean all of us have cars or scooters in our houses now in the automobile industry whenever you go to buy a new car or a new vehicle it is always always very expensive reason is that we have very very high import duty from uh, the foreign uh, car manufacturers so for example i'll tell you when i was in dubai uh, when i started my career in dubai even a mercedes car in dubai would start with 12 or 15 lakh rupees but in india if you have today to go and buy a mercedes the minimum price that you will have to pay is 30 lakh rupees and i'm telling you in inr now in in uae the price of you know petrol is very cheap they promote foreign uh, cars foreign industry to come because their only production in uae is oil you know they they don't have any other industry besides oil and tourism but in india we want to promote different industries so we have our home grown home grown industry like tata we have mahindra and uh, even maruti suzuki for that matter was a joint venture between maruti udyog and you know suzuki but if you see the bigger companies like the german companies or the american companies or even the japanese companies like honda hyundai uh, you know toyota they they manufacture so many vehicles they they would wipe our industry you know at one go so that's why we need watchdogs uh, like the competition commission uh, you know to to ensure that uh, you know there are no anti competitive activities so i think these things uh, you must always keep in mind and the more you read about a subject just to uh, answer mr dubey's question is yes please go for your internships apply in advance because uh, you know i am sure the slots even in cci are very limited uh, i have personally been to their office there have a very nice office now Uh, a new furnished office in, in near southex so if young students who are not from delhi if you go to southex the market is very nice you get very good nice you know uh, there is a bhelpuri wala there in the main market you know who used to be there so i would encourage you to eat that bhelpuri it is very nice bhelpuri and chaat and there is a very nice you know fruit juice that you can also take because whenever i am you know sometime i am tired i am exhausted and sometimes when my client have not paid me and you know i the, the fees has not come to remind myself of my old days i always go to this bhelpuri wala you know and and eat this chart and in my last meeting uh, with mr sukesh mishra ji i think just before the pandemic he invited me to have nice dosa with him so he want uh, you know he called me and he like would you like to eat something i'm like yes i would like a nice dosa so he uh, we had a you know a nice lunch on dosa it was my first meeting with him and that's how you know i ended up uh, interviewing him and after that i think i had a fruit juice at this uh, chart bhanda so it's it's in southex market i would encourage young, young lawyers who are uh, you know coming for internships and have limited pocket money definitely go and explore the south ex market it's i think one of the good markets in delhi thank you for the perfect guidance to these youngsters and the fictitious test of the <laughs> samosa and belpuri dosa and belpuri i'm sorry thank you for that so the next question from the peers of the participant is that there has been some criticism over the cci not exercising its jurisdiction or power the uh, over the issues pertaining to the digital economy or digital markets so sir what's your take on this sir 
Uh, sir, I think uh, it's a very uh, tricky phenomenon even for CCI, and I'll tell you why. Traditionally, uh, the term business, as we understand as human beings, has been a brick and mortar business, and uh, I think since the tech boom in the early 2000, and what we have seen in the pandemic also, uh, that the digital economy has grown many fold. Uh, people have come online, OTTs, uh, you know, which are not, uh, which are unheard of, let's say 10 years ago, we all used to rely on cable television. I remember as a kid growing up in India in the early 90s, uh, the first cable channel in India was CTV. And then uh, we had DD, uh, the main Doordarshan and the DD Metro in, in metropolitan cities. And then slowly the Star TVs and other networks started coming in India. And, uh, you know, we had the press laws, uh, the press trust of India laws and other broadcasting uh, laws to, to govern them. But I think uh, this year, uh, the mighty ministry, uh, you know, uh, and the information technology ministry also uh, 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 formed new rules and regulations uh, uh, in addition to the IT rules to govern uh, the growing nuisance of the online digitization and how, uh, you know, uh, it's rapidly growing because one, we do not know who is behind which venture. One doesn't know which uh, company is governed by whom. Most of these big players may already have a lot of subsidiary companies which may not have been heard of, which may not even be registered in India. Now, how do we go about tracking them? So this is in actuality a very acute problem, not just of India, but I think of the world over because the world have come online. So for example, if today, let's say you may have, let's say any, any favorite YouTube channel about travel or tourism uh, or about, let's say about science or if you are, if you are watching a debate uh, on any foreign university, you know, it's just a channel. You don't know whether the company is registered and if it, uh, you know, if, if, if they are drawing most of the traffic, the audience traffic, how do you go about it? And I, I think that becomes a problem. The other thing uh, you know, in terms of digital tech is uh, the whole, uh, and I'm trying to give a relative example, uh, which, which, which are maybe audience can relate to, is uh, we've all heard of cryptocurrencies, right? Uh, and how, how uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin, other, other currency like, uh, you know, Ethereum and, you know, they have different, different names are being used. So the, so the concept and the technologies of blockchain and blockchain is used for different things and blockchain as a method is where every person is a stakeholder and whenever something happens in a blockchain, every person who is a part of that blockchain gets, gets informed. But in cryptocurrency things are very different because you do not know who has invented that cryptocurrency. It can be a fraud also because, but people are relying on it. Then there's the fluctuation of cryptocurrency because uh, China's stand on cryptocurrency is very clear that they, they are not going to promote it. Indian RBI and Indian government has also said we have no law as of now to regulate cryptocurrency but we want the people of this country to invest in this cryptocurrency on their own accord or on their own peril. We have nothing to do with it. Now these things are very important because how do you regulate something which you did not know where, uh, where it originated? You know and, and something like the dark web. Now people like you and I who are normal people normally use Google or Microsoft or Firefox you know to browse on the internet. But people who are hackers or ethical hackers or cyber hackers they can use any platform. So in, in dark web, you have drug sale, you have human trafficking issues, you have cryptocurrencies issues, you have so many issues. How do you go about, you know, tracking them? So I don't think it's just a competition a commission of India problem. It's a problem uh, of a lot of regulation, both in terms of information, technology, law, and other crime, which may also be happening. So I think uh, the governments of all the countries really need to put their head together and have proper checks and balances to ensure that these things uh, do not harm the society. I think, I think that is very important because any law is made to protect the society, you know, protect the people uh, and the citizen of the society. So I think that is very important that we have to look at because at the end of the day, any law, uh, you know, has to always do a catch up. So once a crime or once a scenario has happened, then the law will be made because law or the lawmakers cannot anticipate that this thing is going to happen. So I think the yes, challenges are immense, as you rightly pointed out in your, in your question. But how do we uh, handle them? How do we track them? And, uh, uh, you know, is it something which is a wait and watch game for all of us? Great, sir. So the next question from the participants is, how do you see the future of competition law in India as and what would you advise those looking to enter to the same field? There is another part in this question that to what extent do you see it as a niche area within the general sphere of the corporate practice? And also, sir, uh, one similar another uh, similar question from another participant. So I would add in this uh, so as to answer perfectly that she is uh, trying to say that uh, competition law is an emerging area and it has not been part of the syllabus of Bachelor of Laws program universally. In most of the universities, it is, it is now the part of. 
but in conventional universities still they are hesitating to add so what other resources could be easily available for such students so sir two questions yes sir for you so if i'm not understanding correctly i think there were three questions let me let me try to uh, recapitulate them because uh, other, otherwise i'll forget to answer them properly Absolutely. one is what can, can a student do to uh, ensure uh, their career in a niche practice like competition law yes sir. Uh, its impact vis-a-vis -vis corporate law practice and yes. uh, the opening question was future of competition law in india right future so so far as future is concerned it's already here we are in the future you know everything that we dreamt of in the future we are living it right now so you know uh, there was a netflix series uh, that people said was made two three years ago which had a thing called pandemic or corona which was later deleted some whatsapp circular was there uh, so that was the future we are living the future we are all in the pandemic uh, so far as competition law is concerned cartelization is a truth harsh truth uh, it has always been there abuse of dominant position is there merger acquisitions are always going to happen so far as the companies are going to thrive uh, so uh, and as I said half an hour ago, I got that Google is now suing the CCI. So this is the future when people who are supposed to be probed, you know, are now uh, suing the people who are to probe them. So this is the future, sir. Uh, simply, simply put. And I don't know if it's a good future or a bad future. As I said, only time will tell when the courts are really going to you know take the bull by the horn. That is number one. Number two, uh, as I said in my I think the first answer to all the young students here, please uh, prepare for your internships because nothing is going to prepare you for the real world, uh, uh, you know, till the time you are in the real world. Uh, you know, you may be in your law school, but internship will give you a different perspective. Uh, when you're doing a moot court, it will give you a different perspective. When you're doing a debate, it will give you a different perspective. So everything uh, that you do is always going to give you a different and a better perspective. A law school helps you, it enables you uh, to build a very strong footing and a ground for your grooming as a lawyer. And I think that is very important because uh, the basic subjects we are taught in any law school uh, are the subjects uh, with which you have to be armed with you have to be aware of those lo laws as a, as a very basic you know phenomenon of being a lawyer uh, because uh, let's say if you're in your third year of law school i'm just giving a very random example and you start studying crpc or cpc or evidence uh, but let's say if you're in your first year of law school and you go back home after holidays and you know people in your neighborhood come and say vakil sahab kya chal raha dunia mein ye crime ho gaya bataiye and you will be you know baffled because you have not uh, done criminal law you have not done civil law, you have not done competition law, what will you answer? But if you have done some internship, let's say by third year, fourth year, and the same neighbor comes, you can, you know, you can have a one up on that neighbor and you can, you know, try to give them a smart answer, you know, try to wriggle your way out through that. So, the, as, as I say, there is no shortcut. You will still have to apply for internship. You will still have to study all these things. So far as comparison of other law schools is concerned uh, uh, of the curriculum, uh, I don't think I'm the right person, person to answer that because I do not know how law schools design their curriculum. My limited knowledge is that everybody has to adhere by the guidelines given by the Bar Council of India because that is the apex body in the country which decides uh, the model and the module uh, of our uh, you know, academic courses. Uh, I think uh, perhaps they have to consult UGC, I'm not sure. Uh, but even in my time, when I, when I was a student, I had to undergo five years of law school and courses and I have to study all those subjects. In my time, I think one semester we used to have seven, seven papers. And in the first two years, we had an option between French and German, at least with my university. That was a option i don't know what uh, the ICFI model uh, is or curriculum is uh, but you can uh, like we are having this webinar uh, you had a two day wonderful course conducted by university your faculties here so i'm sure your faculty is taking good care of you by inviting guests and people uh, with good and robust knowledge in computational law who can give you some guidance but as i said uh, law is a is like a marathon you know a webinar would not enable you or would not make you master uh, of a particular subject it will only give you the highlights of a particular area or a sphere of law so there is a lot to be read, there is a lot There is a lot to be desired. But having said that, uh, uh, any lawyer worth their salt will tell you, if you want to study a law, start with the basics, what we call the first principles. So please pick up the Bayer Act, uh, read the index of the Bayer Act, because if you try reading sections one by one, you will fall asleep, you know, that's how laws are designed. And that's why normal people run away from the law and we, we get paid for reading the law. So t take the index, try to make sense of that law. Try to put it in tables and formats which will appeal to your senses because law at the end of the day is logic and common sense. So you have to devise the logic from that act. Uh, fortunately for you, as I said, when I started uh, the law school, uh, it was the year 2002 where the Competition Act was also being launched. So it was a very, very new field in my, in my time and people were not thinking of diversifying into that field. But today, in 2021, when I'm talking to you about competition law, 
we already have a lot of modules sort of reading material available online we have a lot of parallel jurisdictions uh, and and other universities which with which i would i would encourage ICFI also if you already do not don't, don't have a, a you know a knowledge exchange program or a student exchange pro program you can you know get in touch with foreign universities in developed jurisdiction which already have good competition law jurisprudence with them and have you know correspondences webinars and lectures which i think will uh, benefit your students also uh, as i said we are living in an age where technology is all pervasive so i think it's only a matter of time where big universities like yourself you know could have a, a knowledge uh, exchange program with other universities within the country or you know across the globe and i'm sure people will be happy to uh, uh, come and you know share their knowledge because at the end of the day uh, i always keep telling this to people uh, and at the sake of repeating myself i'll tell it to the younger audience again everything is human driven you know so companies uh, our companies on paper, but they are run by human beings like you and me. I'll be a director, I'll be a CEO, I'll be a CFO, I'll be a manager. You, you give me whatever designation you have to give me. But a cartelization or abuse of dominant position or a merger and acquisition or a crime or a leak is always governed not by machines, but by human beings. So you have to understand the human psyche. You have to understand the human civilization. You have to understand the mandate of why a law was created and how this law is lacking in today's scenario. For that, you will have to undertake the study of the news uh, that you see every day. So if you don't read newspaper, I would encourage you to read newspaper because newspaper always give you a glimpse. When I told you about Reuters uh, at the start of this program, in seconds the news traveled to me. I think at 3.23, uh, the Reuters published this news. At 3.25, a WhatsApp reached to me. You know, And at 4 o'clock today, we are on this webinar when we started and I gave you a news. So look at, look at the hyper-connectivity of information and knowledge in today's day and age, how fast this news is traveling so now that i've given you a piece of information please delve on it go and read about this see whether google has any 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 uh, you know actual basis for this complaint or not you have the internet at disposal google itself is the biggest search engine search on google whether any cases are going against them in different uh, jurisdiction in the world whether any uh, you know anti competitive or antitrust activities have been launched against them in the us itself because us has a lot of stringent laws so far as you know uh, antitrust activities are concerned so the world is your oyster and we have all the search engines today. I don't think you need to tell, uh, I know I need to tell the young lot today what to do. I think you already know what to do. But uh, just uh, be a little, uh, you know, smart with the time management. And uh, young students, I would always tell you, stop blaming your college or institution. You have to rise to the occasion, you know, uh, to help the society. I think we all have to, you know, pull each other in the right direction rather than pulling each other down that my college is not doing this, my university is not doing this. If you know the problem, find a solution. Thank you, sir. We also noted your suggestion with regard to the exchange program and similar activities. Sir, the next participant asks that uh, uh, one who wish to specialization in wish to specializes in antitrust and competition law in general, what experiences or particular trainings or particular academic requirements or any other similar thing that you consider that it is essential to prepare so during their law school days right the first thing is your llb degree yes you sir have an llb degree uh, no law office no lawyer no company will uh, you know consider you uh, be it the biggest psus in the country be it the government departments i know a lot of people uh, you know who are today are advising people on think tanks, who are advising people in parliament, who are advising people in PSUs, who are advising the governments. I also represent the government myself. Uh, so I can tell you, uh, the first requirement is your degree. Then you, second is your number of years of experience. If you think right after passing from, you know, ICFI or whatever law school you are in, you are going to get a very plum job. You know, people are going to come to you. I'm sorry, my friend, you're mistaken. You'll have to learn the ropes of the profession. It will take time. And antitrust and competition law, as I said, are very, very niche areas uh, and high stake matters are involved. We are talking of crores and billions of dollars sometimes, you know, crores of rupees here, which are involved. Uh, so for that, a lot of law firms, their teams are already already working day and night, you know, because a lot of billable, billable hours are concerned for them also, uh, you know, when, when they're representing a big, big client or a big cartel, uh, you know, in a, in a multi uh, dollar dispute. So these things are very important. And uh, right after law school, nobody is going to give you that case. So don't don't be in a dream world that, you know, you are going to become XYZ lawyer or some senior lawyer that you have thought of in the first year of your career. It takes time, be, whether you're a corporate lawyer, whether you're a litigation lawyer, things take time because you will have to understand one, how the world works and how the law regulates the world and the way it works. So I think that is very important. So take your time, read as much as possible, read company law, uh, read company law judgments, read about NCLT, NCLT, read Supreme Court judgments about them, 
read about competition commission read about supreme court judgments on the on the different competition laws uh, which have come out i think we have, we are all uh, we all have i think law, law schools uh, have you know uh, subscription on manupatra icc online other uh, foreign subscription you know ask your faculty to mentor you in, in that aspect and i am sure they will be happy to help you thanks sir very particular and specialized answer and uh, sir the next participant is exploring a question that what would you like to share with the audience about the general work environment and the demanding nature of a corporate sector job right so i'll give an example of for my first two years with a corporate law firm though i was in their disputes team it's a very demanding job because as i said when a matter comes to you when a client comes to you uh, if you are on the corporate side there are different verticals because uh, corporate is a general term you can be doing merger and acquisitions you can be doing ipos you can be doing uh, finance uh, you can be doing insurance reinsurance so there are different verticals depends what type of corporate job you want to do because uh, corporate is a generic term and there are a lot of specialization involved uh, you know within within a firm uh, that you are going to join so uh, that's why i said internship is always a good uh, good uh, precursor for a young lawyer or for a young lawyer to be uh, to uh, to be doing because then you realize what has to be done so uh, Uh, when when i was young let me give my example i i did my internship uh, with with un organization with law firms with judges with the uh, litigation lawyers because i got an idea uh, as to how different uh, you know offices work and i think that is very important when i was at the firm it was a british law firm they had a lot of big stake matters you know regarding aviation regarding shipping regarding insurance corporate advisory corp- corporate disputes so if if uh, you know even if you don't get a chance let's say to intern or if you for some reason miss your internship Uh, with a law firm, or for maybe because of pandemic, because you know, in pandemic internship also diluted and diffused. Uh, don't lose hope. You know, you are only starting your career, and be hopeful because, as I said, law is a very, very long term thing. Unlike sports people or film stars who gain prominence in their twenties or maybe in their teenagers because they a video goes viral. For us lawyers, our peak, uh, you know, is when we cross fifty because then we have a lot of experience. Uh, you know, uh, behind us, people trust us. People trust us with our white hair. I still have black hair. or people trust us with our white hair and all that you know so your value in the market uh, definitely goes up so take your time do internship if you are a fresh lawyer who is about to graduate or who has graduated look for different jobs don't after we the big firms all the time they may not have vacancy or they may have their own criteria of uh, you know selecting candidates from particular type of law schools there may be different criteria and that's the employer criteria i can't change that but keep trying and the moment you get a break keep learning i think that is very important great sir uh, one small question is from my side uh, and then i will take again the participants question and question is that sir when you entered upon the practice so uh, did you start with a general practice uh, involving all kind of areas or or something it was specialized of competition law since then only no sir competition law obviously as i said nobody is going to give you unless you are with a firm and i started my career in dubai and dubai is a civil law country i mean we are a common law country but dubai law is very much like french law and the other thing is in uae everything happens in arabic so even if you want to go to court you won't understand a thing unless you know how to speak and uh, you know read arabic or understand arabic as a language uh, but then things get translated into english because you are with a uh, you know solicitors firm and then things happen differently but i did a lot of uh, um, huge uh, you know variety of matters you know uh, uh, clyde and co uh, was my firm's name and it's uh, one of the leading uh, firms in uae in fact the number one firm in uae and in uk it's a very it's known for its shipping and aviation practice especially in the insurance and the reinsurance sector so a lot of clients would come to them be for arbitration be for mediation be for litigation and then uh, uh, i had the privilege when i joined mr sibbles chamber in india mr amit sibbles chamber in india he is now a designated senior lawyer he had lot of variety of matter in telecom a uh, bit of mrtp bit of fema fair competition and all that so he was doing uh, you know a lot of civil litigation so as, as i said things keep coming to you with time you know people have to see whether you have an expertise in something they will come for example if i am speaking to you i am also uh, you know show that you are also gauging me you know so that's how uh, interview or a webinar uh, or a, or a conversation helps in in building your rapport in building your goodwill because people are also smart you know people in law schools especially in in, in our industry when we speak of law schools lawyers think tanks politicians bureaucrats any anybody who has done a first degree as, as law you know is an intelligent person by 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 training because five years or three year of our legal education gives us that basic premise of uh, gauging the other person or at least making you smarter uh, you know than the other brigade yes we are not engineers we are not mbas but we are lawyers and lawyers lawyers the profession is one of the oldest profession in the society 
and we have been saving people left, right, and center throughout uh, you know the civilizational dispute. So uh, we have to be the smarter crop, uh, you know, definitely as lawyers, as a, as a breed, as a crop of lawyers to you know help other people. And whatever technical dispute it may be, it always comes to the courts. It always comes to the lawyers. And we are the mouthpiece of our clients. You know, be it a, be it a, a dispute regarding satellites, be it a dispute regarding dams, be it a dispute regarding states fighting among themselves, be it a dispute regarding finance, revenue, competition, RBI, SEBI, you name it. And you know. Everything is gone by rules and regulation. So you know, the world is our oyster. It doesn't really matter, you know, what what uh, at what stage the matter comes to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question from our participants. For lawyers seeking to learn and work in antitrust laws, Ji. which is advisable according to you, trying to enter in a law firm or seek work under an independent lawyer. I mean, the participant wishes to ask that what are your suggestions in general for the lawyers who are seeking to learn and work in entry test laws area see there are two things uh, my answer would not vary because this is a very basic answer which applies to every field of law mm. as i said because these are very high stake matters so a really eminent senior lawyer a designated senior lawyer a lawyer of some eminence would be mm -hmm. uh, you know given these cases if they were independent practice that is so far as the litigation practice is concerned if you want to join a firm, as I said, there are very few firms in the market who are doing niche uh, competition law practice. And because some of my friends are partners in those firms, I know them personally, uh, their teams are already packed, uh, you know, and, and uh, the, amount, the volume of work, uh, the demand of their time is huge. And once uh, you get absorbed in a firm, I think it's a great beginning because you also learn how to draft, uh, you know, a pleading and drafting is very important. You know how to research. If you directly go to a senior chamber, even seniors say it many times that please do not join us directly if you're a designated senior because you will not learn drafting. You will not, you will not learn pleadings. You will not learn how a case is born because by that time a senior is briefed. A lot has already passed under the bridge. A client may have already come to a solicitor's firm. The solicitor firm would have been briefed. Then they would come and brief a senior because the senior cannot directly interact with the client as per our laws. You know, so my advice to any young lawyer would be try going for a firm because that firm would teach you the basic uh, preparation of a case. That is number one. But if you still think that a senior is a right fit for you, by all means, you know, I have no one to say no. Do join them. Experience how, how the chamber works. Experience how uh, the style of arguments are framed and formulated. Learn how research is done in a good chamber. And I think that will really equip you, uh, you know, for the time to come and it will definitely make you a good lawyer. You know, nothing, no learning goes for a waste according to me. Great, sir. Thank you. Uh... Next question is uh, very general about the subjectivity of itself. That is, uh, what according to you are the required soft skill set for the lawyers to build a successful career? A very, very good question. Yeah, yeah. I would say at the at the cost of being uh, you know immodest, watch my channel see you soon. We have a lot of good legal chat series uh, on that about all these things for all the young lawyers. And the mandate of the channel is to target young lawyers, young law students, especially during pandemic, because I personally know people have suffered. Uh, you know, you will see, not just from my journey, but from the journey of so many good people in our industry uh, who will give you the answers in different fashion. So there is no right answer for that. There is no one answer for that. Uh, that's why, you know, please watch it. Uh, spare some time. These are these are long chats, but I have tried to make them simpler. I have tried to make them in a, in a way in which any person who is not even a lawyer can understand them. So try uh, watching those things, because if I talking start talking about that, it will take another two hours of this webinar. And I know the time is only 60 minutes going to. Right, sir. Thank you. Uh, one last question uh, uh, I am taking from the participant side is that uh, when the Indian competition law regime is compared to that of the UK or USA competition law regime, do you think that there is a lot of head spaces for progress in India? Look, uh, uh, diff different countries work differently and, you know, they have a different sense of uh, how the law has to be interpreted. I I would say we should start drawing inspiration from the good things, but definitely not criticize our law just because we are a developing country or we think UK and US has something better to offer. Personally, I don't think that should be the right thing to do. Definitely, if there is a progressive jurisprudence uh, in other countries, we must take the best of it. And that's how law has to be interpreted worldwide. Even foreign uh, countries, uh, you know, uh, sometimes relies on Indian laws and uh, the, law, the law laid down by our constitutional courts. So I don't think we have to be too quick uh, in, in terms of saying that, you know, our competition law is lagging behind. Uh, in fact, CCI is, is one of the leading, uh, uh, you know, uh, authorities in not only in India, but, but worldwide also. That is number one. And the history of competition law in US backs to their uh, Sherman Act of 1890, 
uh, you know, and then in UK they have their own uh, you know local act of uh, of they have their own office of fair trading. You know what we have in uh, what we call the competition of uh, you know CCI here in India. Then US Department has their own Justice of Antitrust Division. So yes, laws take time to progress, but we as a country, uh, you know, have have a different uh, business sense. Uh, so I don't think it would be right for us to start comparing us to how business is being done in US or in UK. Yes, the world is streamlining in terms of how businesses are done. Uh, and the law are also developing similarly. So, for example, a murder is a murder everywhere, right? And anti-competitive activities everywhere will be anti-competitive. Be it India, be it US, be it UK, doesn't really matter. Cartelization will be cartelization in, uh, in in all these uh, jurisdictions. So, I don't think uh, uh, it will be fair uh, to gun down our competition law or our authorities. I think they are doing a fantastic job, and we have a lot to learn from them and from other countries also. Sir, thank you so much for your answers. And now my colleague will take over. Thank you very much, Mr. Bhatt, for uh, such an enriching session. I am sure that the students are uh, really enlightened after listening to you and uh, such a compelling arguments you gave in the favor of, uh, I mean, a lot, lot uh, would think of uh, taking the competition law as uh, the future profession. So uh, now I would uh, like to call upon uh, Ms. Monica, Mrs. Monica Karola, ma'am. Assistant Dean of Ikfai Law School to extend the vote of thanks. Over to you. Thank you, Amani. Thank you. So it's been a wonderful two-day session, two days uh, workshop that we have heard experts on the topic of mergers and acquisition vis-a-vis -vis competition law. And uh, Mr. Jayant, the guest speaker for today, has excellently given the latest examples that are there and how India is trying to uh, foray its way to protect the interest of our businesses and of our investors. And uh, we would also like to inform that uh, ICFI University has uh, had a very strong curriculum since the time it started. And we have had the benefit of having, <coughs> sorry, uh, current subjects which are relevant like competition law and uh, law of the sea or aerospace laws. We are trying to, you know, update, keep our students updated with the latest uh, subjects so that when they go out, as uh, Sir has said, that uh, the students have to be very competitive. Whether they get the input in the university or not, it is important that they should be updated. And we try to do it through the university so that we can give an edge to our students. So we thank uh, Mr. Jayant Bhatt today for giving this uh, wonderful you know, direction to the students about how they should go about in doing their internships at the right time, at the right place, uh, because in the third year, fourth year, they are able to appreciate the law better. They'll be able to understand and pick up the uh, uh, nitty gritties of uh, practicing in the uh, niche fields and uh, especially then they have to be able to cope up with the information that they are getting and be able to utilize it once they pass out and get good uh, opportunities with different lawyers. I agree absolutely that working with senior lawyers may not be so fruitful as it may be in the law firms where they are exposed to various uh, aspects of building the case and uh, fruitifying it through the decisions of the courts. So Mr. Jayant Bhatt has excellently put forth his opinion and I'm sure that many of our students will look forward, watch his videos and also would ask us for his details to be contacted. So we look forward to you, sir, for being with us and also taking this webinar even further by uh, being in touch. And I thank yesterday's uh, speaker, Mr. Bharat Budholia also for having come to this web workshop and giving his knowledge and input for the workshop. I thank everyone, all the participants for watching and the students I watch. I wish you all the best the field is open for you, like Mr. Jayant Bhatt has today said, that there are so many possibilities for lawyers to work and work successfully. And India will do well only if our 
future generations, they come up to the challenge. So with these words, I thank the organizers, Ms. Stuti, uh, Mr. Surya Saxena, Aman, Mr. Aman and uh, Mr. Abhishek Dupe for making this workshop very effective and helping in uh, making a topic which is, you know, a little new, difficult, but we have had this uh, competition law and we have had members from the Competition Commission of India coming to address the students. And today the lawyers have made it even more, uh, you know, clear that this is a field where students can do excellently provided they work hard and they understand the subject well by constant learning. So I thank the speaker, Mr. Jayant Bhatt, once again for his uh, time and valuable talk to the students. Thank you to the organizers and on behalf of IFPI University Dehradun, I thank all the participants who've been part of our journey of these webinars and workshops. It's a learning effort. We are trying, trying to do our best and I'm sure that you will uh, you'll benefit from these talks. So thank you once again, everyone for being with us. Thank you on behalf of IFPI University Dehradun. Over to you, Aman. Thank you very much, uh, ma'am, for such kind words. And uh, Mr. Bhatt, uh, just for the information of the participants, uh, the link for uh, Sir's uh, YouTube channel uh, is pasted in the chat box. You can uh, just uh, be a part of that. I would rather insist that please uh, take a look at it. Please subscribe to it. Right. And uh, I happen to watch, uh, Mr. Bhatt, your conversation uh, that was posted on that. Uh, the recent one that you had with uh, Mr. Bharat Chug. And uh, yes, it, it, was a, it was a nice one. And uh, I would also encourage the students to please subscribe to uh, Mr. Bhar's channel and uh, you will get to learn a lot from there, like the nuances of uh, how to prepare for the judiciary or the skills that are required for the litigation and other allied things, I would, uh, be, I would say. And uh, I must say, uh, sir, that it is uh, sue you soon. The, the title is quite catchy. I mean, uh, yes, it, it surely... Uh, uh, piques the interest of the person. And uh, thank you very much again, Mr. Bhatt. And uh, I would again extend you uh, the thankful greetings uh, from the side of the organizers, uh, organizers the entire corporate uh, law team. And uh, thank you very much for uh, coming over here and enlightening us. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for uh, having me and uh, asking the young ones to subscribe to the channel. Definitely Absolutely. more subscriber. And to your friends also, please, I always say, uh, you know, have a good competition, have, have a positive spirit, spirits. Sometimes what young people do, they don't tell it to their friends. And I tell it to my interns, you know, this is for your benefit. This is in a public domain. Just, just, just you know, the, if the elementary questions like what should I do? How should I do internship? All those elementary things are taken care of. I think we as lawyers and we as, uh, you know, stakeholders in the legal system can do much more better in terms of bringing the finesse of, you know, the laws there are, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a broader horizon. So these elementary things should be taken care of. And uh, the young ones can always... Follow me on LinkedIn. I'm quite active there. And I have a little bit presence on Instagram. I think it's, it's a young platform. I'm also trying to learn from other people on Instagram. But these are two other platforms where you can easily find me and connect with me. And thank you. Thank you so much again for having me on. Absolutely. Here. Thank you. Thank you, for, uh, thank you sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Every participant is requested uh, to fill the feedback form, please. It would be of great help. Please make sure that you fill the feedback form. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to end the session now. Thank you.
can we stop meeting